Omnibus is devoting the whole program today to Goldsmith's She Stoops to Conquer. And here, without further ado, are George Hastings and Tony Lumpkin to begin the second act. Jewels. Keep them and hang those I say that would rob you of one of them. Yes, but how have you procured these from your mother? <laughs> I procured them by the rule of thumb. If I had not a key to every drawer in mother's bureau, how could I go to the alehouse? Yes, but I dread the effects of her resentment when she finds she's lost them. Oh, never you mind her resentment. Leave me to manage that. <laughs> I don't value her resentment the bounce of a cracker. <laughs> oh, here she comes. Take them away. Take them away. tell cousin Constance when she asks for her fortune. Very well. You say that and I'll bear witness that it's true. But this is no pretense, boy. I am ruined and honest. My bureau's been broken open and the jewels taken away. <laughs> stick to that. Stick to that. I'll bear witness. I tell you I am not in jet booby. <laughs> That's right. I understand. Oh, was ever so woman? Was ever a woman so beset with fools and thieves? What are we to do? <laughs> we can bear witness. <laughs> you laugh, you ungrateful brute. Do you insult me, monster? I'll teach you to make sure, mother, I will. I'll teach you stay, stay. An unaccountable creature is that brother of mine to send them to the house as an inn. I don't wonder the young man's impudence. What is more, madam, the young gentleman, as you pass by in your present dress, asked me if you were the barmaid. <laughs> he thought you were the maid. Did he? Then as I live, I'm resolved to keep up the delusion. Tell me, Pimple, how do you like my present dress? Don't you think I look something like Cherry in the Bow Stratagem? Well, it's the dress, madam, that every lady wears in the country, but when she visits or receives company. And are you sure he doesn't remember my face or person? Well, certain of it. Oh, I vow I thought so. For though we spoke for some time together, yet he never once looked up. Indeed, if he had, my bonnet would have kept him from seeing me. What do you hope for, keeping him in his mistake? I shall be seen. He shall look in my face at least. <laughs> are you sure you can act your part? Did your honor call? Attend the lion there. Pipes and tobacco for the angel. The lamb has been outrageous this half hour. <laughs> it will do, madam. <laughs> Boring in every part of the house. If I go to the best room, there we have my host and his story. And if I fly to the gallery, there we have my hostess with her coat. And here? Did you call, sir? No, child. I'm sure I heard the bell ring, sir. No, no. Well, perhaps the other gentleman called, sir. No, no, I tell you. <clears throat> Why, yes, child. I, I think I did call. I wanted, uh, I wanted... I vow, child, you're vastly handsome. La, sir, you'll make one ashamed. Oh, I never saw a more sprightly, malicious eye. <clears throat> yes, yes, my dear, I did call. Have you got any of your... Um, Watch him call it in the house. Oh, no, sir. We've been out of that these ten days. <laughs> One may call in this house, I find, to very little purpose. Suppose I were to call for a taste, uh, just by way of trial, of the nectar of your lips. I suppose I might be disappointed in that, too. Nectar? Eh? Nectar? Hmm? Oh, that's a liquor there's no call for in these parts. We sell no French wines here, sir. <laughs> of true English growth, I do assure you. And it's odd I shouldn't know it. We sell all sorts of wines in this house, sir. And I've lived here these 18 years. 18 years? Why, how old are you, child? Oh, sir, I mustn't tell my age. Oh, to guess at this distance, you can't be much above, um, 40. 
Nearer? I don't think so much. When one comes close to some women, they look younger still. And when one comes very close indeed... Oh, great, sir, keep your distance. <laughs> one would think you wanted to know one's age. They do horses by mark of mouth. Oh, I protest, child, you use me extremely ill. If you keep me at this distance, how is it possible that you and I should ever be better acquainted? Who wants to be acquainted with you? Oh. I want no such acquaintance, not I. And I'm sure you didn't treat Miss Hardcastle, who was here a while ago, in this obstropolous manner. I vow before her you looked dashed and kept bowing to the ground and talked for all the world as if you was before a justice of peace. <laughs> what? That mere awkward squinting thing? No, no, child, I find you don't know me. I, I laughed, I, I rallied it a little, but I was unwilling to be too severe. No, I couldn't be too severe, curse me. And you're a great favourite among the ladies. Sir. Yes, my dear, a great favourite. Yet, hang me, I don't see what they find in me to follow. At the ladies' club in town, I'm called their, their agreeable Rattle. <laughs> <laughs> Rattle is not my real name, child. Oh, it's just one I'm known by. My name is Solomons. Mr. Solomons, my dear, at your service. Allow me, I salute you. Oh, sir, <laughs> you're introducing me to your club, not yourself. <laughs> and, uh... You're a great favourite there, you say? Yes, my dear, a great favourite. Huh? There's Mrs. Mantrap, Lady Betty Blackleg, the Countess of Sligo, <laughs> Mrs. Longhorn, and old Miss Biddy Buckskin, <laughs> and your humble servant to keep up the spirit of the place. And it's a very merry place, I suppose. A very merry place, as merry as cards, suppers, <laughs> wine, and old women can make it. And their agreeable rattle. <laughs> ah. <laughs> You laugh, child, hmm? I laugh, sir, to think of what time they have for minding their work. Ah. Oh, so do you ever work, child? I sure. There's not a quilt or a screen in the whole house but can bear witness to that. Ah, so. Then you must show me your embroidery. Oh, I am a connoisseur, my dear. Oh, if you want a judge of your work, you should apply to me. <laughs> Well, by candlelight, you shall see all in the morning. No, not now, May. Such beauty fires beyond the powers of resistance. <laughs> My old luck. Good evening to you, sir. Oh, madam, this is your modest lover, Kate, Kate. Art thou not ashamed to deceive your father so? Oh, trust me, dear papa. I have thoughts of turning him out this very hour. Give me that hour, then. Oh. And I'll satisfy you that he's not what he sees. <sighs> In an hour, let it be. But I'll have no trifling with your father. All fair and open. Do you mind me? All fair and open. One hour, then. One hour. <laughs>